Call this beat Will Smith, cause it slaps hard. Hear it not when I pull up on your boulevard. What is relationship repatterning and how does it differ from the traditional methods that most counselors or couples therapists use to try to get couples back to that good place? Yeah, so most couples counseling works on, let's work on the relationship. So let me understand you, Harry. Let me understand what your problem is with me and what I'm doing to affect you. And then help me to change so that I don't, I no longer trigger you in that way. That's pretty much how we could sum it up, right? Mm. So let's work on the communication together. Let's compromise. Let's collaborate. Let's find a way to understand each other. And once the idea is that once I understand you, that I should be able to change my behavior and make my behavior fit your needs and vice versa. Okay. And, what's the flaw and that, in that works. I'm sorry. I said, what's, what's the flaw in that, in that uh, pathway? So it's not so much a flaw. It's just that it doesn't always work, as you so rightly pointed out, right? Um, it's very difficult for somebody to change. And the reason it's so difficult for people to change is because we have our own brain patterning, which is taking that action. So we like to think that we are in control of what we do, okay? We're not so much. Our brain already has predetermined patterns that created when we were little that continue to take those actions. So let's just use an example, right? I worked with one couple. He had this annoying pattern, at least annoying to his wife, where he would yell at the kids all the time. And he was so impatient that he would stand at the bottom of the stairs and say, get down here, dinner's ready. And if those kids didn't leap out of their bedrooms in that particular minute and come running down those stairs, he was already charging up the stairs, angry and mad. This drove her crazy. She was at the point where she just couldn't take it anymore. Now, he knew that was driving her crazy. He knew that that wasn't effective. He knew that the kids weren't enjoying this and didn't even want to come down for dinner. But he couldn't very readily change that action. He could control it a little bit with willpower, but eventually that pattern would win out and he was back to yelling again. So what did we do? Well, I stopped trying to get him to change anything. Instead, I determined, I said to him, okay, let's identify the pattern that is yelling, that has impatience. And when he started to look at that pattern, he realized that how much his mother had controlled him and needed him to be on time all the time and how much he felt disrespected when these kids didn't leap at his first command. Great. That was the first step is understanding why he was doing what he's doing rather than trying to change what he was doing. Second step is he had to own that as a pattern. So he flipped the switch and he said, okay, that's my pattern. I get to own that. My wife doesn't have to deal with me because I'm yelling or she or the kids don't have to speed up. I've got to own that that's my brain pattern that is doing that. Now he could deconstruct that pattern in other words, remove it from his brain and then reconstruct a brand new pattern. Well, the results when you do that are incredible. I mean, the kids started um, gladly coming down to the to dinner. In fact, he was the chef and they would come and help him cook in the kitchen, right? He wasn't yelling anymore and he wasn't doing it out of trying to manipulate himself not to yell. He was just not yelling anymore. And that's the difference when you work with patterns. Hmm. It's also interesting to note that like, you said at the point that he was able to identify why he was doing that and start to work on that pattern, that that particular conflict in their marriage like completely went away. And I'm Melted. curious. Yeah. And I'm curious to know, like, so, you know, oftentimes if the, the myth of society is that oh, all couples fight and this is a lover's quarrel and it's bound to happen, whatever. And I know I've actually been in relationships where no fights occurred when both people had good communication styles, but also we kind of worked on, you know, how to approach each other and whatnot. So is it actually possible to have a relationship that's conflict free? And if so, how do you achieve this? Yeah. So uh, you achieve it by, first of all, knowing how your brain works. So our brain is always interpreting the information coming in. So what causes us to have, have conflict when one of our patterns is triggered? So I like to say when you're in conflict, it's because you have a triggered pattern that is misaligned with the actual situation that you're in today, okay? So that's the first thing to know. Oh, I'm in conflict. That means I've got a pattern. Great, yay. I mean, you can actually start to go, oh, yay. I didn't know that I had that pattern until I was uh, until I was triggered, right? So that's that's a really awesome thing to know. Okay, so then it's a matter of owning and taking control of that pattern for yourself. 
Stop trying to make that about your spouse's problem or your partner's problem or your kid's problem or whoever you're dealing with, right? We yeah. have this we have this real, dare I say it, victim mentality in this world today where we're not owning our stuff, right? We're expecting right. other people to. Fault. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're expecting other people to change to fit us rather than just owning it ourselves. So as soon as we can own it, uh, great. But now the problem comes in, okay, well, then if I own it, how do I fix it? And that is a wrong question. That mm. is the question that everybody asks that will get you into trouble. Your question is not how do I fix it? Your question is, let me just remove it. Let me remove the pattern that is triggered. Now, as soon as you remove it, there's no more trigger. So now what happens? Well, now I like to say that every person is the center gear in the machine. Okay. <laughs> so all the relationships are working around your gear and they're moving in relationship to how your gear is moving. If you can gently go in and just gently turn that gear in the opposite direction, what will happen, Harry? One of two things is going to happen. If you do it gently, then every all the other gears start to move in the same direction to fit your direction. If you do it too fast, boom, you blow the machine apart, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why repatterning is always such a gentle um, approach because we're just gently turning that gear in the opposite direction and now everybody starts to move with you. Okay. And as long as the direction you're moving in is optimal for those around you, and it will be if you're working with your brain patterns, then okay. no conflict, none, as you're saying. Okay. Now, if conflict arises, you know, oh, it's just a brain pattern. I know how to deal with it because you, you're going to have a four step technique in your pocket to deal with any conflict that arises. But if you do it long enough and often enough, all of those conflicts melt away. Hmm. Now, I, I just had a thought. A lot of times, like when people go to couples counseling, let's say, like one, one, like say the woman saying to the guy, like, you don't do the X, Y, and Z, or you're always yelling at me or doing mm -hmm. whatever. And then so sometimes the other person will think, okay, I got to change my pattern. But what about the other person that's involved? Mm -hmm. Like, if I change my pattern. How's that going to make them change their pattern? Like, how, how can, as a couple, do you manage that? Because, like, you want to change yourself, but there's no guarantee the other person is going to also change their patterns if you happen to change yours. You know, that's if I can start talking nicer, that doesn't necessarily mean his wife's going to automatically think that, oh, I can, you know, let, you know, be more calm around him or whatnot. So, like, how do they remedy that? That's right. That's right. That, that is the biggest hurdle that a couple has to get over. I can change me, but then that won't mean that the other person will change. Well, first of all, they will change, okay? Um, if you change you, then their patterns will change to align with your new patterns, okay? So that mm -hmm. it, it happens every time. If I work with just one person in the relationship, it is amazing how the other person starts to transform just when we're no longer triggered. I mean, just think about it this way. Harry, if you and I are in conflict all the time, and I, uh, my reaction to what you say is now predictable, correct? Yes. <laughs> you know, you know exactly what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do as soon as you say something. Okay, but let's imagine that I move that button. And that you just can't push that anymore. Okay, now what's going to happen? Well, you're going to say it. I'm. It's going to go in one ear and out the other for me. I'm not even probably going to hear it. Or I'm going to respond in a very different gentle way. Okay, now your brain has to make a correction because now that's brand new data for your brain. And so your brain goes, oh, wait a minute, that didn't work. Okay, let me try this. And for a while, the other person will keep trying different things to trigger. But when those triggers don't, take, they don't hit, mm -hmm. then eventually the other person's brain falls in line and transforms and boom, no conflict. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop. Let's you are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high.